Welcome back everyone, we're still in the thick of cow scanning season here in New Zealand, although today it's beef cows, not dairy. These cattle belong to husband and wife farming team, Clark and Judy Miller-Scott. It's just Clark here today though, as Judy is doing the real graft, getting the books ready for the accountant. She'll be just as anxious for a decent result though, not least because she has a pet heifer in here. See if you can spot the black one going through the race. The vast majority of beef cattle in New Zealand, like many other big beef producers, are either Aberdeen Angus or Hereford. But you'll be able to tell, even from this view in the pens, that's not what we're dealing with today. Instead, these are limousine cattle, native to south central France, famous for their muscling and growth, and much beloved by British beef farmers for this reason. In fact, just last week at a sale in Carlisle, 78 bulls were sold to an average of £8,230, with 17 bulls running into five figures, and the top bull being sold for 45,000 guineas. Outside of Europe, though, they aren't a rare breed, but they certainly are not as common. So why do Clark and Judy have them? I haven't seen a lot of these over here. I've seen yours, uh, and I've seen one of your bulls on a different farm, um, but there's not a lot of limmies, or, sh or what we would call continentals, I suppose you would call them exotics. Would yeah, you? no, continental exotics, yeah. yeah. So, so I've seen a, a few Charolais, a few simmies, but really it's, it's Hereford and Angus that seem yeah. To, yeah. To, to, yeah, dominate. So how have you ended up with them? Well, And why'd um, you keep, carry on with them? Yeah, well, we inherited them off my father-in-law who farmed on this property before us yeah. so um and then once you start hanging these things up on the hook you realize how good they are and how yeah. efficient they are okay and look you can tell how mud fat they are and they've been oh. cleaning up behind ewes for me compared to europe beef farmers are paid differently here for their animals when they sell them with more focus on eating quality and less on yield nonetheless growth is still important and clearly the miller scots think there is a place for limbers and cattle here in new zealand and that's why they have their 60 cow stud head. Although there are a few cows to scan here today, it's actually the heifers I'm here for and there's a reasonable amount riding on that result. That's because A, like I said, this is a stud herd and B, these heifers were AI'd, artificially inseminated, with some high value international semen. More on that later. In the spring, I helped devise a fixed time AI program for these heifers. That is a protocol using various hormonal drugs to ensure these heifers came into heat all at the same time so they could be served in a job lot by an AI technician. Then, as is common practice, a stock ball was used as a sweeper to serve any heifers which didn't get pregnant to the AI. And we'd never expect 100% to hold. Anywhere between 50 to 70% would be a decent result. Last year, the equivalent program got 75% of the heifers in calf. That really is a very, very good result. <laughs> So how am I actually able to tell? These heifers were served in mid-November, so on the day of filming, it was 72 days since those heifers were artificially inseminated. If he got the chance, the sweeper bull would have caught them about three weeks later, or possibly another three weeks after that, making the pregnancy he's responsible for either about 50 days or about 30 days. And those all look quite different on an ultrasound scan. For example, here are some images of a 70-day pregnancy, and here are some of a 50 day pregnancy and here are some of a 30 day pregnancy. So assuming I can get a decent view of the fetus, it should be fairly obvious at this point who the daddy is. Clark and Judy want to know that detail so they can accurately track the pedigrees on their next generation of calves. But just as importantly, they invested a reasonable amount of time and money in this program and they want to know how well did it work. I was actually here on the day they were served and based on the amount of riding these girls were doing and the volume of clear goo coming from their rear ends, it looked promising, but there are no guarantees with a program like this. We served 13 heifers in total, so how did we do? That was uh, those 13 heifers, Clark, and about 30 cows of one herd. Those heifers we saw, the AI you were doing, I think we got seven out of 13. Yeah. Now I think uh, if, if I was gonna skew the numbers, cook the books, I'd say I'd take out that one which the AI tech had real trouble with, because there was one, she was in calf, but she was a, uh, 
which is in about 30 something days yeah. we thought yeah um yeah, the AI tech, who's really experienced, was struggling to find the cervix. I think yeah. she got halfway through, but just couldn't fiddle it through. So yeah, yeah. let's cook the books there and take her out. <laughs> and then, uh, so seven out of 12 is not bad. Right. The problem was you did really, really, really well last year. Yeah. You did 75% or something. Yeah, and you know, that, that can happen. Yeah, that can Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's about a, a five-year rolling average or something, <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so, so no, we're heavy. That's good. The semen you were using, was that Kiwi semen? Was it Australian? Was it French? Um, it was Canadian. There was Canadian. two lots of straws there. There was some Canadian from a ranch over there called Bee Bar, and um, the other one was an American one from a uh, PLND Senator, which is relatively old semen, but I know it's easy carving. You just use enough of the stuff in the tank this year. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, stuff, just shaking it and stuff. see what yeah. comes out the bottom. <laughs> yeah. That makes a respectable 54% or 58% if we take out that difficult to serve heifer. There are a few cows to do next, but I'm slowly getting to grips with this new scan over the side technique, so it's not long before these are done too. Using the introducer in this way to scan these girls in the race is much quicker than getting each one in the crush individually. And being quite new to this piece of kit, I'm relatively slow. More seasoned hands would make even quicker work of it. This type of scanning is contingent on one thing though, not having the heifer or cow behind me getting restless and trying to climb over the top of me. Especially as my attention is elsewhere, I'm unlikely to be able to get out of the way too quickly, all the while still having that introducer inside the cow in front. So for everyone's safety, the cows need to be nice and calm. In farming, we're often quick to attribute certain qualities to certain breeds, lovely calm Herefords, the impressive size of the Charolais, the muscularity of the Belgian Blue. And yes, as someone who goes from farm to farm, herd to herd, you do see those patterns, but those patterns are far from set in stone. Generally, you will see as much variation in a trait within different herds of the same breed as you would between different breeds. And I think no trait better demonstrates this as effectively as temperament, that is the personality of these animals. How calm or how flighty they are. A bit like human redheads or chestnut mares, back home in the UK, limousines have a somewhat notorious reputation for being a bit spicy. I'll stick my head above the parapet and say that although it's not universal, the reputation is also not totally undeserved depending on the herd. But these girls are among the best behaved beef cows I've worked with since coming to New Zealand. Is that by chance or is there something else going on? I think the problem was when they came to New Zealand in the 70s, they were mad and fiery and everyone got yeah. put off them, as, as were the other continentals too. But see, we don't handle them enough, so we can't have them mad. No. Because we're not, we can't tame them in a shed or tame them by no. feeding them. So, um, yeah, they, they, they have to be easy to handle. And we've got the docility, you know, we've been docility scoring them now with an EBV for 25 years. So how, how what's the mechanics of that? Is that exit speed from a crush or something? Uh, no, well, how they stand in a crush. Okay, okay. So do they fidget, do their tail swish, do they charge out yeah. of the crush or do they just stand there? So one would just walk into the crush, stand and walk out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two would be a bit jolty, yeah. may, maybe swish its tail, sort of thing like that, and then it gets progressively worse. And you can see that, like with me scanning, I mean, I am reasonably inexperienced scanning them over the rails like that. And if, it, if they'd been mad limmies, I would have been quite uncomfortable doing them because you, there's a lot of trust there and you do have to have an eye over your shoulder uh, with any animals, but with them, they, they stood very patiently yeah. and they're quiet and they're, yeah, it, you can tell you're breeding for temperament is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got to be careful not to only breed for that because you've got to no. have all the other traits. But it's been our Achilles heel with the breed in New Zealand. So this herd has been proactively selected for good temperament. And you can really, really tell. Coupled with the quiet handling technique and an excellent set of yards, the end result is that both heifers and cows stay calm and by extension, stay safe. As Clark mentioned, these cows aren't ever brought into a shed or even handled much. So there is little opportunity to condition them to human contact. Their calm manner has to be inherent. It has to be bred into them. And that will bring other benefits as well. Flighty cows tend to be less fertile. They tend to raise smaller calves. More on that in this excellent recent episode of the AHDB podcast. I'll stick the link to that in the video description. My dad taught me that a surefire way to turn a conversation into an argument was to mention one of three topics. People's choice of religion, political party, or football team. For cattle and sheep farmers, you can add a fourth, choice of breed. Forget the North London Derby, try asking a pub full of upland farmers in the UK, which is better, the Cheviot or the Blackie? 
that is a fuse you cannot unlight. Nonetheless, I really enjoy talking to farmers about it because that same passion they have is infectious. And just like religious persuasions, political philosophies, and premiership football teams, each has their pros and cons, each is suited better or worse to different situations, and each can produce radically different results in different hands. So my typical fence sitting, hedge making vet answer is that there's probably room for everyone to bring something to the table. Anyway, how boring would a one team tournament be? On that note, how does Clark feel about the future of the limousine in New Zealand? Where does it fit in and why? Mm. As with other countries, Angus have got a big hold here um, right now. Uh, and you know, even the old Hereford might be end up being a terminal sire in New Zealand, yeah. the way the Angus thing's going. But um, oh, anyone that has limies and hang their progeny up, they soon get to like them. <laughs> nothing like those good kill sheets. Well, exactly. And that's always been the thing. As long as you, you can, you know, the cows pop them out easy enough and they're, yep. they don't ruin your day when you have to handle them. Yeah. The, uh, what more could you ask for? Yeah, really? yeah and I, I think there's a big future for them in New Zealand with the dairy and the dairy herd crosses. Now, yes. now that um, bobby calves and things are becoming harder, people want to, uh, you know, have a good beef return yeah, good. from their, yeah. And you maybe need to go a bit more beefy to, yeah, over yeah, a dairy cow yeah, yeah. to get yeah. a decent, half decent yeah. crossbreed. And um, once again, um, Limousin's downfall on the dairy thing has been the difficulty in um, dairy workers picking their calves at birth. The, okay. The markings can be a bit. The Hereford always gives a white faced calf generally. So. Well, that's exactly why they like the Belties yeah. and the um, Speckle Parks yeah. and things. Yeah, it's a really interesting thing. We'll talk about that another time. But yeah. No, I, the biggest thing about Limousin is their yield. So when you're hanging them up, um, you know, that 510 sort of live weight will kill you that 300 kilo yeah which you just you know it's hard to stack that weight on an, a british breed yeah that quick and you know you might even have to end up wintering them another winter to do that with a with a british breed you had said you had a couple of scots on here a little while ago yeah uh, and they were saying they pointed out i think they've seen the same graph i'd seen i'll pull it up here somewhere yeah. where limousine had only just been overtaken by the angus in the uk last year i think yes as the most popular sire but i bet you if if you took beef calves side out of dairy cows out of that and you looked at just pure beef calves, I think Limmies would probably still have it by a nose. The other thing that's interesting, there's a study going on Ireland right now on greenhouse emissions and Limousin are going very well in that. And so that'll be their day to slaughter, presumably. That plus just low intake. Oh, like feed efficiency. Yeah, feed efficiency as well. Mm. And I, I'm, I think there'll be emissions testing them too. Yeah, in, oh, in of course. So um, they're scoring very well right up there in the top two breeds. So. Yeah. Um, Stick with them, you palms. <laughs> right, lovely viewers, that's it for this week. If you made it this far and aren't already subscribed, you're missing a trick. Click that button now and don't miss any more videos. To find out more about the breed, follow some of the links in the video description. And if you want to see what scanning dairy cows looks like in New Zealand, here's another video for you. Otherwise, see you for the next one.